It's really exciting to think that it's been 10 years since Open Development first started operating and first started its website and collecting information. But actually, it's a bit like, you know, Pondlok before the 2011, a group of friends used to meet together every week and one of our ongoing discussions was about how there was such a need for some central point where information could be collected and shared. And that was the germ of an idea that became open development. So it's really exciting to have been part of that first little group of women actually um, and to be coming back and seeing how the how the program has developed and expanded beyond Cambodia to remind ourselves that open development was in the forefront there was nothing else like that anywhere certainly in Southeast Asia so the people who've stayed for the 10 years and the people who've helped build along the way have been part of a really important phase in the sharing of information in Cambodia and the region. First of all, we gathered together a little group and there were lots of talking of how it might work, consulting with people who were um, website developers, talking with people like myself who knew about how to collect information and organise it. And we started having uh, some activities based over at House 32 near the museum. So of course then we needed, we needed people who knew how to build a website. A lot of us had used websites, but we didn't know how you go about doing that. Uh, one of the people we, who worked closely with us, of course, was John Weeks, and John is still part of the, the board, the team, yes. So the whole idea grew and grew. And as I said, there's nothing like it anywhere else. So we gathered interested people, and one of them was Norbert Klein, and dear Norbert, was really one of the trailblazers in information sharing before the internet. Mm. With, and uh, the mirror and collecting and translating the headlines and the stories from the Khmer newspapers. That was an absolutely wonderful service. And uh, I did spend some time working with Norwood on that. And uh, I learned a lot about Cambodia through that and I hope other people did too. Anyway, once we started to develop the website, we needed other expertise. And I remember one of the people that was, I think a consultant, was uh, Robert Starkweather. Once we were operational and we had our, what did we call it? The first board. And then by 20, 13, 14, we set up the board. And by that time we'd moved to uh, the, this building here. And I was involved with developing a print library. Before we didn't have to say print library because library meant a collection of books. But now because library can also mean a collection of digital information stored on many computers in many places. So you have to say print library. I was there then when we started collecting the information and organising, working out how to organise it, how to make it accessible. Because it's one thing to collect information, but if you want to share it, it has to be well organised. So then we had to devise a taxonomy, we had to devise 
for subjects that we were hoping to cover, like environment and urban planning and forestry and all kinds of different things. But to work out how these different areas related together and how they should best be organised on a website, that was quite uh, a challenging task, um, but very interesting. And I'd, I'd done it with books, so it was just a matter of changing the way you, you uh, the raw materials you're working with. But you always have to remember who the, the user, the person who's going to be receiving the information. And that's really the most, the most important thing, is making sure that your information is accessible and that can be assured by the way you arrange it, by the way you use keywords and other pictures and data to make it so that people can understand the message. Um, some of the people I worked with, um, there were people I'd worked with before, like Norbert, and there was Kim Sian, who was a very dear friend. I'd worked with her before. I remember Pinky, who was a really bright spark. I don't know where Pinky is now. Piru, who went on to work with Open Development Mekong, and she was in Myanmar. I try to keep in touch with you, with her. And true, of course, we wouldn't be here without you. <laughs> um, so I stayed close to the project until about 2014, when I went to work uh, with the Parliamentary Institute of Cambodia. But I've always followed the website and I've used the information myself in the work that I do with the Parliament, so thank you for that. Um, some of the other people that I remember, especially, was Atif. And I still keep in touch with him. He was, he was a very special um, intern. I think he came as an intern. Uh, there was Vuta and Sreen and Ian Ramage. So many names. I, I, I recognise all the faces um, and I have many, many happy memories. There were many, there were many issues and concerns along the way. And one of them related to the environment was the people in Prey Lang Forest whose traditional way of life was at jeopardy, in jeopardy because of development and getting the information out about this was really important. And one of the people, one of our founders, um, Terry, was very concerned about this and she had visited the areas and knew the people. And, and so that kind of concern about grassroots was also a really important part of, of getting out the information but also being able to understand that it's not just, it's not just dollars, it's not just development, but it's people's lives. And that's, that's what we really care about. So I mentioned that we had a number of interns and one of them was Greg Bem. Greg was um, in the last years of uh, his librarianship degree in the States and he was to come and work with me at the AUPP in the Hun Sen Library. And I cannot remember why now, but there was some reason why that was not possible. So he was still coming and I said to him, oh, I know where you can go. You can come and be an intern with Open Development. And um, that was a great success. He, was, um, he very much fitted into the family of Open Development and uh, I think he, he, he came back several times. Um, I think he really enjoyed his, his time with us. So, that's, so in a way we were a, a bit like a family um, and many of us have been able to keep in, in touch 
Um, thanks, thanks to Facebook and things like that, it's, um, it's so much easier to, um, to keep in touch with friends who go off to Germany or Massachusetts or Australia. <laughs> I hope that I'll be able to keep following the progress of the next 10 years of open development and thank you for giving me this opportunity. And while I'm thanking, I really should remember how important it was to have supportive and interested um, donors and one of our major donors, partners. Um, of course, their major partners East West, and so we worked very closely and amicably with Andy, and we miss him a lot. Um, and Catherine, we're very happy to have Catherine, and um, we know that uh, hopefully this partnership will continue on into the future. So, thank you, everybody. So. While we celebrate 10 years of achievement of sharing information, we also want to look forward to what the next five to 10 years might bring. And one significant part of the five-year program uh, will be to develop a pilot public library program, probably, in one of the more remote provinces. And this is a subject that is extremely close to my heart because I come from, I have been a librarian for 60 years. And I come from a background where I always had a library everywhere. And when I first came to Cambodia, and in 1986, and I could see schools had no libraries. The poor National Library was trying to rebuild itself. But a tradition of reading in libraries had been lost in the Civil War period and during the Khmer Rouge time. Now, more recently, young people are embracing libraries. But we want that to continue. And the way we can help that to continue is by developing libraries, particularly in the more remote provinces where people cannot just get on a bike and uh, go to a bookshop or go to a library. So I think this is a wonderful program and uh, I I'm sure it will be very successful. And it's, it's just so fulfilling to know that something that began as an idea is, is still delivering services to Cambodians and to people who are interested in Cambodia. So I wish you all the best for the next 10 years and beyond. <laughs>